Free Solo, North Carolina, and the Siege of Yorktown are all on this day. Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is September 28th, 2022. It is the 271st day of the year. You got 94 days left. Then you got to come up with a new New Year's resolution. Today's the 39th Wednesday in the 39th week and the 7th day of fall. If today's your birthday, your birthstone is a sapphire still. Today is National North Carolina Day. National North Carolina Day recognizes the 12th state to join the Union. The Tar Heel State was the first state to vote for independence from the British at the First Continental Congress. Before the Civil War, North Carolina resisted secession from the Union. As a whole, the state was against dividing the nation even after other states had already planned on leaving. Eventually, public opinion changed and the state was swayed to join the Confederacy. North Carolina is a beautiful state. The Blue Ridge Mountains, Cape Fear, Kitty Hawk, the Outer Banks. It is also home to the Army's 82nd Airborne. All right, let's see what else September 28th has given us. 1779, the American Revolution. Samuel Huntington is elected president of the Continental Congress, succeeding John Jay. 1781, the American Revolution. French and American forces, backed by a French fleet, begin the Siege of Yorktown. So at the time, the British were in a pretty good position. They held New York, they held Philadelphia, and most of the southern states, including Virginia, where Yorktown was. At the time, Lord Cornwallis, for the British, was sitting in a good position. He could be supplied from the sea and by land. General Washington saw it differently. The French had been helping the United States because they hated the British, not because they were particularly fond of the Americans or they were really getting anything out of it. They just hated the British. They'd been back and forth with them with different conflicts for decades. So Washington had a French fleet basically attack Yorktown from the sea. And this kept him busy while Washington moved his troops in by land with about 4,000 French troops. The British Navy was sent to retrieve and basically evacuate Cornwallis, but they got defeated by the French and Cornwallis didn't get out. When the British attempted to escape by land, well, the French and the American forces were already there and pushed them back into their defensive position in Yorktown. The American and French forces continued to just pound Yorktown. On the morning of October 17th, Cornwallis sent a letter to Washington informing him he was ready to discuss the surrender of Yorktown. Cornwallis signed the surrender terms a few days later, not knowing that a British fleet had just left New York loaded with thousands of reinforcements. Later in the day on October 19th, the British surrendered in an open meadow just outside of Yorktown. The British band played an appropriate tune, the world turned upside down as the soldiers laid their weapons down in the meadow. The French stood on one side of the meadow and the Americans stood on the other side. The British only looked at the French as if they were surrendering to the French because they didn't want to look at the Americans who used to be their subjects. So Lafayette, the leader of the French forces, had his band play Yankee Doodle. Cornwallis couldn't be bothered to surrender. He didn't even come out of Yorktown. He had one of his underlings do it. And when he went to surrender his sword to Lafayette, Lafayette motioned for him to cross the meadow and give it to Washington. He did, begrudgingly. When he got up to Washington, Washington just pointed at the pile of rifles that the British troops were leaving. In the day, that was quite the insult because you were supposed to take this as a honorable type thing. You're supposed to just keep this sword and, you know, hang it up on your wall and tell stories stories about the time this guy surrendered to you and gave you a sword. <laughs> Washington didn't even care, so I'll just stick it in the pile with the rest of the weapons. 1912, Corporal Frank S. Scott of the United States Army becomes the first enlisted man to die in an airplane crash. 1928, Alexander Fleming notices a bacteria-killing mold growing in his laboratory, discovering what would later become known as penicillin. 1951, CBS makes the first colored television available for sale to the general public, but the product is discontinued less than a month later. 1973, the ITT building in New York City is bombed in protest at ITT's alleged involvement in the coup d'etat of Chile. Movies released on September 28th, 2018, Free Solo. This was an amazing documentary. I've seen it like three times. It was the winner of the Best Documentary Feature honor at the 2019 Oscars. The documentary is about a climber on his journey to become the first person to ever free solo climb Yosemite's 3,000 foot El Capitan wall. 
if you get a chance, definitely watch it. I think it's on Netflix right now. Born on September 28th, 1901, Ed Sullivan, legendary host of the TV variety show The Toast of the Town, also known as The Ed Sullivan Show, from 1955 to 1971. He had a short boxing career before getting into television. Originally, he worked as a sports writer. However, he went on to have his own variety show featuring many prominent celebrities. Died on September 28, 1991, we lost Miles Davis, jazz trumpeter and composer who broke the long-held musical norms and helped popularize bebop and jazz fusion. He was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2006, 15 years after his death. He was heavily influenced by Clark Terry during his informative years. In early September of 1991, Davis checked himself into St. John's Hospital near his home in Santa Monica, California for routine tests. His doctor suggested having an implant put in his tracheal tube to relieve his breathing after repeated bouts of bronchial pneumonia. The suggestion, I guess, got him mad and he threw a fit and he had an intracerebral hemorrhage followed by a coma. Now, he'd had some other problems. He was on AZT and a few other things because he had HIV. After several days on life support, his machine was turned off and he died on September 28, 1991. He was married to actress Cicely Tyson from 1981 to 1989. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day, and be nice to each other.